Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Championship Debate. This is the Championship 365 show, which is a collaboration between myself, Ben HD, and the Second Tier Podcast on all things Championship. You can find us each and every week on the Planet Sport Network and check out Football 365 for all the best Championship writing from um, the likes of us here on this screen. We are going to be debating today whether the Championship automatic promotion race has become a two-horse race once again. Before we get into that, um, people don't like change, Ben, so you're going to just have to spend 15 seconds explaining <laughs> why your background is different to the internet. Yeah, for one week only, we've changed the scenery. Um, I feel like just to, just to switch it up a little bit, um, you know, the wallpaper's quite fruity. And I feel like for a big debate or something like that, why not switch it up? It, it probably will be the first three or four comments, so I'm glad. I'm glad you, <laughs> you raised. It. I'm glad you raised it here. Um, Justin Peach of the Second Tier Podcast. How are you, sir? I'm I'm very good. I don't have a, a fruity wallpaper behind me, but I do. I did get a new print for my birthday, so I'll put that up, and um, oh. we can introduce it next week. Yeah. Should we get? Oh no, yes. we'll do that off air. I want to guess. Want to guess what it is? Yeah, we're very boring and monochrome here. I think Ben's. Um, floral decadence there it is. Um, yeah, it really works, doesn't it? Right. So I'm looking at the championship table and I'm casting my mind back to the, the three of us sort of chatting, I don't know, late October, perhaps at the latest November. And we're sat here going, blah, 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 Fulham, Bournemouth, blah, 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 parachute payments, blah, 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 two horse race, blah, 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 five point gap, 10 point gap or whatever. Now, it had all tightened up with the brilliant run of Blackburn, who scored 35 points in 15 games or something absurd like that. And then QPR did the exact opposite of what we thought they'd do um, when Dieng and um, Chair went to AFCON. And they improved rather than fell off. So we got to the point where it's, ah, well, Bournemouth slipped and invested. And we thought perhaps we had uh, an automatic promotion race looking at maybe four teams However, Bournemouth have won their last three games and they had one of those wins that just goes, ah, going to get promoted, where you, where you come back and score in the 86th and the 95th minute. That, that's normally a, a big flag that things are going to move in the right direction, isn't it? Whilst Blackburn have stopped scoring, frankly, and have got two points in the last four. And QPR, maybe, maybe QPR, I just need to... Um, come to an opinion and then commit to the opposite of that opinion happening because uh, like chair and chair and Dieng return back. They've got chair and Willock again, and um, they've got one point in their last three games. So the debate today is, are we back to a two horse race for automatic promotion? Um, let's just get an opening statement from both of you um, on essentially is the answer. Yes or no. I'm going to go in first and say I think we are back in a two-horse race. Um, and we can go into whys and wherefores in a minute. Ben, um, in very simple terms, and um, we know we know football fans like to make everything completely binary and simple, yes or no, um, two-horse race? There is a little bit to this one, but my gut feeling right now is I think I'm along with your line of thinking. and I'm going to say yes. Right, Justin, this is going to be a complete disaster if you don't. <laughs> well, no, no, look, give your opinion and we can we can get people's um, thoughts in the comments, of course. Um, are we down to a complete two-horse race here? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to make it a full house just to keep things spicy, <laughs> but I, I genuinely do think we, we aren't down to a full house yet. I, I, think that, um, I don't think we can rule out Blackburn uh, and even QPR at this point. Well, I think we should probably... Um, stay with Justin then in that respect. So um, I suppose what I need you to do um, is present your present your thoughts and you're almost having to justify a little bit of a Bournemouth drop off. Not it's not we're not in collapse levels yet um, because there's games in hand, etc. And I'll I'll hopefully point you in the right direction. Take a look at Bournemouth's last six or seven mm -hmm. games. Um, they are pretty tricky. I'll get them up while you're, while you're talking. Um, you also need to justify to me um, someone, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, 
having having a big win streak as well. Yeah, I think it it comes down to Bournemouth's lack of uh, form performance wise rather than results. Um, their results have, have far outweighed their performances over the last few weeks. Generally, you go to that Barnsley game. Barnsley arguably created the better chances, which going up against a team who have won two games at that point all season is pretty striking. Um, and then you go to the, the, the previous win at Blackpool. Blackpool absolutely battered Bournemouth. Absolutely battered Bournemouth. And again, you have to argue if they if they were better quality of players, which isn't a, a criticism of Blackpool. Um, but if we're talking if they come up uh, against a team who are um, competing to get into the top six. They would have probably come away with a defeat, Bournemouth, um, and and they were they were they had Mark Travers to thank, and it's his job to do it, absolutely. But if you're leaking chances, um... oh, I'm Roy Keane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very very keen. I'm not going to have a go at anyone. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, if if you're leaking chances, typically they 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 it doesn't it doesn't go your way. Uh, and then and then for me, Blackburn, I think Blackburn, I've still got a lot to offer. I think QPR, the last two games. Um, have been a really poor defeats, really, really poor defeats. Actually, the 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 fan base on Twitter. I know there's a air of overreaction a lot when when your team loses, but that's not exclusive to QPR fans, by the way. No, no, absolutely not. All putting that out. Um, <laughs> but the last two defeats, last two defeats have been really, really bad performances. Um, and that's with players back from tournaments and and injuries. Um, and and as well as that, they they they've been not able to find um something fluid between Andre Gray, Charlie Austin and then Dykes. They need a consistent goal scorer to help out the likes of Elias Cher and, and Chris Willock who consistently perform uh, and deliver the goods but forwards not so much. Um, but yeah, Blackburn, I think, yeah, Blackburn, I think they can, Tony Mowbray is a very good way of resetting the team, getting them back to keeping clean sheets and then it starts to, it starts to flow from there. Clean sheets, goals, wins. The goals results. are the worry, aren't they, for Blackburn? Still creating chances. That's the thing you've got to argue for. They're still creating chances. West Brom aside, they are still creating chances. They are still putting the ball into the right positions. It's just a case of getting in uh, on the end of things. So performance-wise, I think they're ahead of Bournemouth. Just results-wise, lagging a little bit. And just to quickly finish on that, do you see anybody... I know there's a big gap here. You've got... Um, in fact, you know what? Let me just put the table up on the screen that'll make our lives far, far easier... Um, but you essentially have a eight-point gap from Huddersfield to Bournemouth in fifth, and uh, Bournemouth have two games in hand as well. And they're, I think they're around 1.8, 1.9 points per game. So we could, pop, you know, arguably add on, um, you know, three three and a half points into that as well with the two games in hand. Middlesbrough are in fine form, but for goodness sake, that's a nine-point gap on the same amount of games. So. Um, are you are you drawing a line, drawing a line under QPR? Perhaps Justin, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Um, I think I would. Sheffield United probably had to beat Hull to be within a shout of of, of getting up there. They'd be on 49 if if that was the case, um, and then they've still got a game in hand uh, as well. Um, so yeah, you, you could have made a case for Sheffield United, but probably a bit too much of a, a, a gap now. Um, Forest very consistent, but again, probably too much of a gap could maybe make a case for Borough with two games in hand um, on the likes of Blackburn. But again, same same number of games it's as Bournemouth. Bournemouth so. have got a catch. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so it's quite difficult to, to make a case for them. And I think from their perspective, they've got to score a lot more goals to to put teams to bed, essentially, um, like they did against Derby at the weekend. So I'd probably draw a line under QPR and I'd have question marks over QPR. Great stuff. So without going all Cathy Newman on you, you're saying uh, possibly a Bournemouth um, performance, slight drop off, and you think there's more headroom for QPR and Blackburn to go again, yeah? Absolutely, certainly Blackburn. Okay, um, Ben HD, uh, a two horse race. Um, I assume you disagree on one count or all counts. Um, what are your thoughts um, generally and reflecting on what Justin's had to say? Yeah, I do think that I agree with Justin that Bournemouth on the sort of bulletproof side, maybe that we expect Fulham to be um, for the rest of the season. I certainly think that Bournemouth still have a wobble in them and that's sort of been seen by, um, you know, some recent underlying performances and things like that. But the area where Bournemouth pulled so far clear of everyone else around them at the moment is 
the squad depth and I mean I was looking at their bench against Blackpool and they had Freddie Woodman, Chris Memphis, Emiliano Marcondes, Jamal Lowe, Leif Davis, Ben Pierce, and James Hill. It is an incredibly stacked up squad. And going into you know the month of March, which is going to be busy for everyone, I just think that Bournemouth are gonna click back into that grind again. Um, and the results continue to pick up from there. And this is, you know, by no means a knock on um Blackburn and QPR who have been, you know, absolutely terrific for this season so far. But I think to expect them to p- continue to perform and actually outperform Blackburn Bournemouth because of that points per game for the rest of the season is some ask for them at the moment. And I do think that the cutoff is probably QPR. I agree with Justin. I think that Sheffield United needed to win last time out um, to get back within the conversation. West Brom have obviously faltered recently as well. So with the cutoff being QPR at the moment, I struggle to see anyone else of those two sides matching Bournemouth's results from now on. Um, and the only probably sort of saving grace maybe and something that you can probably touch on is Bournemouth's running um, at the end of the season. I think that that's the sort of wild card in all of this. But um, yeah, if Bournemouth are to continue at this current rate and Blackburn and QPR continue to have that trend off a little bit, as much as it pains me to say it, I do think we are back in two-horse race territory. I have a comment and a question. The comment is, it speaks volumes that we were well, well into this video and Ben said the word Fulham. I think that speaks volumes that no <laughs> one's even met. It's like, okay, right, fine, yeah. That that one's a given. Um, yeah, um, if I can put it back to you then, rather than take it myself, here is the run-in. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to go back a page because um, you can almost make a... There's this big game against Forest and Swansea away, if they're, if they're in the mood and they're keeping the ball and you know the type of game it will be between Russ Martin and Scott Parker. It does perhaps even out a little bit there. I'm looking at Peterborough, Derby and Reading, which is three of the bottom four. And then... You get this run here where Huddersfield are in the top six. West Brom are a parachute team. Sheffield United are a parachute team. Middlesbrough are in the top six. Uh, Coventry, well, they're better at home than they are away from home. Then you get a big game against Fulham, which could mean something. Um, I'm sure Fulham might have that one earmarked as um, <laughs> as um, party poppers day, mightn't they? But hey, it might already be done before then. But um, And then look, Blackburn, <laughs> wow, Blackburn away. Second last game of the season. That is the Easter weekend. Is it previously? No, I think it's just before. Um, Millwall at home. Well, what I will say is um, when you look at a run-in, always favour the teams that are at home on the last day of the season. I always <laughs> think that helps. But Ben, is there is there an argument to say that if they haven't perhaps maintained the gap going into that Huddersfield game, I know we can suggest maybe six, seven or nine points in that run against Derby, Posh and Reading. But is there an argument to say that the chaser, the hunter then becomes a little bit favoured with the, with the tough run? I do think there's, that there is a little bit of that to take into consideration with this one. I certainly think that at times throughout this season so far, there have been some, you know, big matches that Bournemouth have had throughout the season where tactically Scott Parker has maybe been done over a little bit. Um, you know, thinking back to that Blackburn and Middlesbrough game that they had, um, I think in back-to-back week, weeks when they lost um, against those two sides. But I think it is all about that gap from now on and Bournemouth managing to maintain that. So I think we'll learn quite a lot about Bournemouth over this next sort of month or so and then going into that group of fixtures. And I suppose it depends by that point and when Bournemouth really get into the final sort of four weeks of the season, where Blackburn and QPR are both at by that point. I think it more probably depends on those two than Bournemouth um, in terms of if they're in the position to go ahead and really pounce on them in this tough run. 100%. 100%. Well, being as the boys have both given very nuanced views, I'll go completely mathematical <laughs> on it then and give no nuance whatsoever. But um, actually, no, I will. My view on Fulham is nuanced on the basis that why I think they're just going to continue the course is the, the team's not changing anymore, is it? Well, I can probably reel it off without looking that we know it's going to be Rodak. Um, now that uh, Williams, the new fella, Robinson, Adrabio, Ream. Looks like it's Kearney and Reed pretty much. And then the front four, if they're fit, Carvalho, uh, Cabano, Wilson and Mitrovic. I suspect if they're close to fitness, um, and we will always talk about muscle memory in relation to the championship, 
I think they're just going to get... You can't so much say that about a lot of the other teams in respect of you know exactly <laughs> what you're going to get. Then I agree with Justin, well, both of you, in fact, that Huddersfield are not going to make eight points up on Bournemouth. That's nothing against Huddersfield. I just... That's that's a collapse. Um, and that's a Bielsa Leeds collapse, losing nine out of the last 16 or what. <laughs> You know what, whatever, whatever they did to drop from second and let Je- look, Sheffield United were brilliant, by the way, that season. Before any Leeds fans um, or Sheffield United fans yell at me on that one, but it was a collapse, wasn't it? We all know that. Um, and then when you factor in Blackburn and QPR, I just think games in hand, and um, none of those teams are projecting eighty points um, in terms of the playoff positions. And okay, it's a race, but historically. We're looking at 85 to be in the um, be in the top two over the past 10 years. And Bournemouth are very much projecting that. So it, it's weird because this whole conversation, all three of us seem to have been going, uh, Bournemouth this, blah, 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 Bournemouth that, Bournemouth, 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 Bournemouth. But it is though, isn't it? We're at the point now where if Bournemouth stay the course, the signings work, Parker doesn't completely drop one and there's a collapse it's kind of theirs for the taking, isn't it? So I think we are in two horse race territory. And because no one's mentioned money, I'll also say Blackburn, QPR. I know Huddersfield had the parachute payments, but they obviously all went to a new owner. (laughs) Middlesbrough have had them and they've obviously expired now. And Fulham and Bournemouth, what they were able to do squad-wise with Wilson coming and Muniz and... You know, maybe trading up Dennis Adoy for Williams on loan and keeping Carvalho. And Bournemouth obviously had a really aggressive window. I just think that may be the the tipping point. Um, So, uh, final conclusions. Let's go to Justin then. You're kind of the most optimistic. Um, What's your message for QPR and Blackburn fans, essentially? Keep believing. (laughs) Uh, That would be the obvious one. I think it is a case of um, that they are both good sides, probably more Blackburn, which isn't the message you want to send out to QPR fans. But no. <laughs> um, I think I think Blackburn have, have got a lot more about them defensively, which in my opinion probably helps, um, especially going into the final stages or final third of the season. Um, I, I do think there's a chance uh, for, for, for Blackburn, but they've got to start picking up wins. And if they can keep the pressure on Bournemouth, I do think Bournemouth may just um, collapse. Not collapse, but drop off. The final Final thoughts from you, Ben? Yeah, I agree with something that you said earlier, and it was in that game they had at the weekend against Blackpool. The manner in which that result sort of came around <laughs> just feels like, okay, yeah, this this team's getting promoted. Um, you know, when wins are happening like that, Remember so Watford at Cardiff, match. Ben. Sorry to interrupt. Watford at Cardiff last season didn't play very well. They weren't yeah. winning away from home, and mm-hmm. I think the, was it the left back Messina smacked a free kick straight through the keeper's hands yeah. in stoppage time, and I sat there and I went. Right, Watford are up. They, you know, yeah, they're, they're not going to lose now, are they? So, yeah, so, so, sorry, did finish your thought, sorry. Yeah, no, it sort of just felt like in that moment that the penny dropped a little bit and that if they do sort of continue into these next sort of four, five, six matches and that gap maintains, I think it's probably going to be a top two of Fulham and Bournemouth. And we get to the point, don't we, where you're kind of saying, what do Fulham need to do? Stay the course, par, even if they're average, they'll probably, probably get top two. Yeah. Bournemouth, stay the course. You're looking at QPR and Blackburn to go on a... You're looking at Chair and Willock to really tear it up and a, a winning run. You're looking at um, Ben Brereton Diaz to go on another mega goal scoring run or something like that. So you need that surge, don't you? But there we go. That is our views on the automatic race. We would love to hear your views. Get them in the comments. Um I'm sure Fulham and Bournemouth fans will be heavily behind what myself and Ben were saying. <laughs> QPR and Blackburn fans will be uh, heavily behind Justin. And Huddersfield, Middlesbrough, Forest, Sheffield United, West Brom, Luton, Preston and Coventry fans just hate all of us, frankly, um, because we didn't <laughs> picture them in the race. But look, we're, we're having a little bit of fun with this. Get your ideas in the chat. All opinions are valid and there's no need to be a jerk about it in the comments, is there? Um, right, say goodbye, Ben HD. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Say goodbye, Justin. Always a pleasure. Cheers. And, of course, quick plug for these two guys, because we're going to put this down my channel. Uh, Ben HD, the preeminent championship channel. He predates (laughs) all of us, doesn't he? Ben HD is the OG of championship YouTube, I think. 
um, and Justin and Ryan with the second tier podcast. Um, always fun and always controversial on the Twitter. They love it, don't they? <laughs> um, so get involved in both of those. Um, we thank you for watching. If you want to check out Championship 365 Rover on the Planet Sport Network. In the meantime, get your views in on is the championship automatic promotion, a two-horse race. Thank you.